Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, The Crafty Quinn. And this week I have for you some fall wood DIYs. I am part of a playlist with a bunch of other creators who are also putting together some wood DIYs for you. So make sure to check them out on the playlist that I have linked in my description box. First, we're starting off with this fall craft. This is one of Dollar Tree's brand new fall signs. It's got a lot of gl uh, glitter on it, but I took that off because I love the shape of it overall because it looks like a cutting board. And what's great about it is once you have it painted over and it's all blank like I have it here, I mean, the canvas is empty and you can do what you want. But I decided to distress the entire piece, as you can see. And a lot of that was out, was out of frame, so I'm sorry I don't have it featured here, but I actually used a paintbrush for the distressing of this pumpkin and of this sign, and I used the Waverly Color Fawn, which is a nice kind of brownish, grayish color. And I'm showing you how I did it with these two pumpkin cutouts that are also from Dollar Tree. All of this is from Dollar Tree, so just expect that in this craft as well. <laughs> but I, the way that I'm distressing here with this pumpkin is exactly what I did with this cutting board. And I wish it would have fit better in frame because I would have loved to have featured the process, but at least I can show you something similar that I did and just using a regular paintbrush instead of what, what I was using before, a stencil brush, works a lot better. And I feel like my distressing has gotten better overall because I went back to using a regular paintbrush. And I didn't actually use a chippy brush or anything for this. This is just one of Dollar Tree's standard paintbrushes in the paintbrush section over with their tools area. So these are both of Dollar Tree's new fall cutouts. And this, these Farm Fresh words right here, that is also one of their new items right now. This should be out on your shelves right now at your local Dollar Tree. And if it's not, I'm sorry, but it should hopefully be coming soon because it definitely took mine a little while to get there before everyone else. <laughs> so I really do like those letters, but we're gonna jazz them up a bit later. In the meantime, I wanted to focus on embellishing these pumpkin cutouts. I'm using both raffia from Dollar Tree. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this is, I just kind of flip it around so you can see the, the angle here of me actually hot gluing it down to the, the smaller pumpkin. But both pieces of raffia are from Dollar Tree and I love that green color. I love to try and use it every fall if I can for usually a, pump, a pumpkin related craft. <laughs> <laughs> but normally it's an orange pumpkin. So here is what I'm doing with those Farm Fresh letters. It is time to distress them and make them fit with the rest of this cutting board. This is one of the last finishing touches to this craft. And then I went back and I hot glued down this pumpkin right before I ran out of hot glue. <laughs> I ended up adding a little bit of jute twine to the handle and now it is complete. So like I said, this is a friends collab with other creators such as Blondie Next Door, Rebecca Virginia DIY, and Liz Moore Decal and Decor. Thank you all so much for inviting me to be part of this playlist. Please go check them out. Go check out their channels and watch the playlist so you can check out their wood DIYs ideas. <laughs> so this is a new piece of Dollar Tree's farmhouse fabric. They have so many pieces like this right now. And this, this pumpkin cutout piece, they should have that back in, in stock now as well. But they had this last year, so I did hold on to a couple from last year because I assumed I was going to make... I don't know, another sign with four of them or something. So I had picked up another one of these. Now for this, I just used a simple Sharpie marker with a fine tip. You don't have to use that. You can use a, a thicker one if you want, but this is slightly less cutting, but I will say it can be a little bit tricky to get the fabric to kind of stay right against the wood piece there, but you could use a little tack spray if you want. I didn't do that. I was just kind of going a little bit faster with this but the tack spray will, will hold it in place for just however, however long you need it to, or, or not long, but short. <laughs> so the first one turned out okay. Definitely had to go back and, and trim some more excess off of this, but just kind of went through, did a quick measurement on all of those and cut out all of those pieces. And I realized I needed to 
actually paint the entire piece green because it would have showed up underneath because the fabric is, is kind of see-through. So I put, I made the mistake of putting Mod Podge on the fabric and through trial and error, I have learned now that it really only needed to be on the wood piece itself and not on the fabric because the Mod Podge came through the fabric when you do it like this and it kind of showed through the darker areas of this fabric and then I had kind of like a, a glistening because it showed through and everything and it didn't need to do that. So then I learned my lesson and I only put it on the piece itself and not the fabric so much. And that helped with some of the Mod Podge not getting through because then I just used my hair dryer and was able to just kind of hold it down using heat. So I did do that to the rest of this project, but I just wanted to let you guys know what I learned through trial and error. And I believe you, uh, one of my subscribers told me before that heat was the trick and it definitely is. I mean, I had no creases or anything by the time I was done. So I just put it a very even coat. I made sure that there were no bumps in Mod Podge or anything like that. Put a very, very even coat flat on this piece. And then after a while, I kind of started doing kind of section by section. So I'm like, okay, I hot glue, well, hot glue. <laughs> I glued down the, the bottom of it, put some heat on it, and then that held it down. And then I could kind of go and do the rest. So I did it section by section that way to make sure that it would stay in place while I was gluing the rest of it down. And for a last step, I took this polka, polka dot ribbon that I stole from another project. <laughs> I had it prepped and all ready to go and I just added it to the top. But I actually made two of these bows and I didn't like this bow at the time. <laughs> so I didn't use it on an Easter project and I saved it for a future one. But here's the end result. And this is just your midway reminder to please subscribe if you haven't already. And I would love if you would follow me on Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, and Facebook. So for this next one, we are just using three regular oval shaped pieces of wood. These can just be found in your regular Dollar Tree Crafter Square section. So these are not fall related in any way. I painted them, I believe I, I used white for this, and then I took half of a wine cork, actually cut it in half, and then I stuck it to a popsicle stick. And this was the trick that I learned last year. You guys may have remembered this from my, from my fall videos last year, but I used a lot of cork stems for pumpkins, and this was the trick. It held it right behind it, and then the cork itself gets to kind of sit on the very top of the very well, top of the project. So I put a little hot glue there and then hot glue on the rest of this backing that you make. And hopefully got a good angle on this, but I don't know if you can see this, but <laughs> now you can't, but it will, yeah, there we go. So it, it's kind of on the back there and then the front of the cork just sits at the very top, which you'll see once I flip it around. And now for this, they have rub-on transfers of these stickers this year, it looks like. I don't know if the cheetah print came in that pack too, but I saved these stickers from last year, but they will have similar ones to these out this year. And this is just more of a fun project. You know, I don't want it to look like some high-end piece or anything like that. I just wanted a good reason to use these stickers. <laughs> but I really like these stickers and I want, I'm saving them for something. And I realized after a while that I might just keep hold, holding on to them if I don't use them on something soon. <laughs> So this definitely didn't feel complete to me. I decided it needed some kind of, I don't know, outline or trim or something. I actually went back and I painted the cork, as you can tell, and that is the fawn color that I've been using from, from Waverly. And then I decided to distress the top of the pumpkin and the sides of it as well, just to touch it up, give it more of a rustic feel almost. 
but mostly it just the white was just too stark white for me. And then I stole this raffia bow from another project and hot, hot glued it to the top of this one. I love the way this turned out and this was just a super quick and easy fun project. Now this one, <laughs> this one is many steps because I feel like I just use so many different colors of paint in just so many different steps. And so I love this wood cutout from Dollar Tree and they have these every year if you can find them. It's the one with the pumpkins in the back. I made another one of these last year in I believe a calendar video, a Dollar Tree calendar video that I did. And so I used mostly, actually I think all Waverly colors for this pumpkin. So I used moss, the green, for the, for the, um, uh, I don't know, the part that goes over the wheel, that, that's what that green color is. And then I did use Waverly ink, which is kind of like, like a chalky acrylic. And then for the wheels and for those, those bars right there, I used the Waverly plaster color. And the orange that you see me using right now is actually another Waverly color called pumpkin. So I thought, how fitting, how appropriate for this. <laughs> so one, once all of those pieces are painted, then I just kind of went back in with the finishing touches. This is fawn that I'm using for all of my distressing and for the stems of these, pump, of these pumpkins, I felt like it fit. And I don't know if you can tell, but those hello fall words right there, that also came in the same pack as the farm fresh words in the beginning of this video. And they are a new set of words in Dollar Tree's fall section. I decided to distress them and I love the way they turned out. And I started with the wheels and then I kind of went distressing crazy and I distressed the entire truck. And I thought it looked way better with some of that rusticness to it. It's hard to tell that the paint actually did go on top of the, I don't know what to call them, the bumpers. <laughs> I don't know what to call them. But I did the entire truck. Maybe it shows up a little bit better here in the video, but I feel like with the final photo, it didn't really show up as much. But we are distressing the entire truck, pumpkins included. I went back and I did that later. But I put those hello fall words right in the very center. And I just felt like the truck needed something. I don't know. I am a minimal, minimalist crafter, but I love embellishments at the same time. And this is the end result. See, if, I feel like it didn't show up on the green so much, but definitely the rest of the truck looks distressed. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Check out the playlist, like I mentioned. And if you wanna watch more videos, check them out here on the left. And let's keep in touch on Instagram. Thank you guys and see you next week.